broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. All right. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to the 2020 NILA Council, Council of Candidates Forum. So today we have the Council at Large representing Public Library candidates. And they're going to be discussing why they're running for this position and also take questions from the voters. Um, so thank you so much for everyone for participating. Um, if you don't know who I am, I'm Christina. I'm the new communications marketing manager here at NILA. Um, so before we begin, I just want to note that elections open on June 15th and will close on July 15th. And you must be a NILA member in order to vote. So you can check that by logging in um, and you can also check that by looking at your member status. Um, and also just another housekeeping, um, this is being recorded and it'll be shared on the 2020 NILA Council Election Candidates Forum page um, by the end of the week for anyone to view. And yeah, um, to begin, we will have all our candidates give a brief two to three minutes candidate statement. And then we'll ask questions that we have pre-prepared here at NILA and then jump into the Q&A portion. We'll start with the pre-submitted questions um, and then any ones that are put in the chat. So I'll be monitoring the chat throughout. Make sure just, if you have any questions as people speak, just put them in there, I'll make note of them. All right, so without further ado, um, we'll have our candidates share their opening statements. So we're gonna start with Stephanie, then Lisa K, Sarah P, and then Lisa H. All right, Stephanie, take it away. Hi, everybody. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Stephanie Hartwell Mandela. I am currently a counselor at large on, on NILA. Uh, my opening statement, wow. I'm a public librarian, uh, certified originally in 2010. Uh, my first life was early childhood. I was an early childhood teacher. Uh, currently, I am the assistant director and head of youth services at Northcastle Public Library. Um, before, I be before I came to Northcastle, I was at Katona Village Library. And uh, before that, uh, my first full-time position out of school was at um, a correctional facility, actually a, a women's max correctional facility. So I feel like I have a broad range of experiences as far as libraries are concerned and uh, how they affect uh, the community and whatever community that is. And um, I just want to continue to serve. That's it. Thank you. All right, Lisa Kay. Uh, so I started working in libraries um, a very long time ago. I was 14 and a half. I needed a pair of shoes and neither one of my parents would give me money. And I went down to the public library and got a job as a page. So I kind of consider myself a library brat that I've, um, other than one other job part-time, I've worked in one way, shape or form in um, public libraries. I was a school librarian briefly for about four years. I currently adjunct um, in the Department of Library and Information Services for St. John's University. Um, but when I became a page, I really wasn't thinking I want to be a librarian. Um, and so it really wasn't until I was uh, in my last year, as it often happens, I was in my last year of undergraduate. I was an English major. I had teaching certification for grades 7 through 12, and then I did 10 weeks of student teaching and quickly realized at age 22, I did not want to be a high school English teacher. And my uh, boss said, you should go to library school. Um, and I just was very lucky. I graduated back in 1994 from Queens College. And that was a time where they actually needed, needed children's librarians. Librarian. Sorry, sorry, I'm hearing, hearing feedback, feedback. Uh, I don't know what's going on with me. Here. Um, what is this again? Or is there a lot of feedback? Oh, uh, you're kind of breaking out a little bit. <sighs> this office hates me. Okay, go to somebody else so that I can just figure out my audio. All right. <laughs> um, Sarah, do you want to? You can go. Oh, Lisa, I hope your office doesn't truly hate you. I'm sure it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> or you. Our oh. physical office. Oh, dear. 
Well, um, I just want to say hello. I want to say welcome to Christina. Welcome to Nyla. Uh, I hope you'll enjoy your career with uh, Nyla. It's a dynamic group, I, I will say. Um, if you haven't figured that out already, you will shortly. Um, so my name is Sarah Potwin, and I work as the Executive Library Director for the Niagara Falls Public Library in New York. There's two of us, one in Ontario, Canada, one in New York. I'm at the one in New York. Um, uh, I feel I have to clarify that because sometimes deliveries go to the wrong building, as you can imagine. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so um, I just wanted to express a thanks uh, to consider my application for running for, uh, for counselor at large. Um, why am I interested in this? Well, um, I, I've been working in the library field my entire life, and I think Lisa's got six months on me. Um, similar to Lisa, I myself started working in my public library in Cornwall, Ontario, um, when I was 15. I can tell you my first day of work was August 8, uh, 1986 and I worked as a shelver, and I was lucky to have some really dynamic mentors to um, help give me guidance, and they must have seen something in me. They offered me challenging experiences, and I grew from that, so I, I consider myself really lucky, um, but uh, over the past 32 years of my career, I've seen a lot of growth in our communities based on strong libraries. I, I have to say I'm really committed to libraries being a cornerstone, being an engine of empowerment for our community. And um, I can't imagine any other kind of job uh, than being a librarian. Um, so I, I did graduate from the University of Alberta um, in, uh, in 2000, pardon me, in 1996. And um, I've worked uh, in various libraries, both school and public libraries in Ottawa, Ontario. Uh, as well as in New York State. I came to work in America in 2000, so I've been here almost, uh, I've been here 20 years. Um, uniquely, I've worked in various areas of New York State. I've worked in Messina, New York, in the North Country Library System. I've worked in LaGrange, which is in the Mid-Hudson Library System, and currently Niagara Falls in the Nioga Library System. Um, one of my big takeaways is that geographically we're a big state, but collectively we're a small library community and we all face similar challenges. Um, um, we've modified our services during this COVID-19 um, to make ourselves relevant. And as horrible as this disease is and as horrible as um, the effects are, it has forced us to become better. And I'm really proud of, of libraries in New York State that have done that. Um, so um, I do feel that we need to have more representation from Western New York. So that's another reason I'm running. And finally, um, I feel that in order to be an active member of NYLA, you need to be involved. Uh, you can't just pay your membership. You need to be doing stuff, whether it be running for council. Um, I will say I myself, I've stuffed conference bags during a conference time, um, people should get involved. Uh, in order to be a dynamic organization, we need to have people who are involved. Um, so um, I'll leave it at that. Thank you. Uh, let's go back to Lisa K. Is your microphone all good? Yeah, can you hear me better? Yes. Yes. Okay. I disabled the computer speakers and I retract my statement that my office physically hates me. Um, <laughs> So when I graduated, I started working as a full-time children's librarian at Farmingdale. I was extremely lucky. It was an environment and a time where there actually were uh, an abundance of library positions. I then went into the schools and was an elementary school librarian, and I missed the public library. Um, and that's why I'm running for the Nyla Council position, because there's such teamwork. And although I loved being in a school as well, you're the only school librarian. and um, in a public library, you have people you're just surrounded by a department and, and other colleagues to learn from. So being on council gives me that next level experience of connecting with uh, colleagues from all around the state. Um, when I went back into libraries, I, I started over at Middle Country Public Library and I was their family place coordinator. And that gave me the opportunity to travel uh, regionally, which was 
over quite a few states. And again, I coming from the New York, Long Island area, uh, then being able to go into rural libraries, smaller libraries, and to always take something home with me when I left a public library. There's always something to learn. Uh, so I took those experiences and just over time, um, gradually left children's services. I worked at the system for a while as the uh, youth services coordinator and eventually wound up at Lindenhurst uh, Library as the assistant director. And then when our former director retired um, two years ago, I took the job of director, which has been eye-opening and exciting and a whole other level of public librarianship. So thank you for coming back to me. Of course, thank you. And then Lisa H. Hello everyone, good afternoon and thank you for coming to the forum. My name is Lisa Hewell. I'm the head of circulation and technology at Josephine Louise Public Library in Walden, New York, which is in the Hudson Valley. I have been a librarian, a professional librarian since 2004 when I got my master's degree. Prior to that, I received a bachelor's in library science in 1978 from Southern Connecticut State University, which is where I also got my master's. At the time I went to Southern Connecticut, I enrolled in a school librarian program, which was phased out in my junior year. So I thought, well, what does one do with a bachelor's degree in library science? And I became a newspaper and worked at the Times Herald Record in Middletown for um, 26 years, not all of them as the librarian, 10 years as the news librarian. And then I was fortunate enough to move to the newsroom where I was an editorial assistant, a copy editor, a columnist, a lot of things. <laughs> and it was some time around 2001 that I received an alumni newsletter that said Southern Connecticut was offering the online master's program. And I thought, well, this is your chance. You, you should have gone for your master's right when you finished, but <clears throat> it took a detour, a big one. So at uh, age 38, I decided to enroll for my master's. I went part-time. I continued working full-time at the newspaper, and I also worked part-time as a library assistant in Middletown. But it was somewhere around 2000. In 2001 that I thought, you know, this, this internet is going to be a big thing <laughs> and it's going to probably do a lot to the newspaper industry and it certainly has. So I'm glad I made the decision to get my master's degree and I have worked um, in uh, <clears throat> full-time positions in libraries in New Jersey and New York since then. Um, the library I'm in right now is very small. All of the libraries I've worked in have been very small, so I've been very lucky to be able to do a lot of different things, programming, collection development, and I've also, um, through the guidance of one of my directors, decided to get involved with Nyla, and she said, you know, this is something for you. You've got a big mouth. Get out there <laughs> and be heard. So, um, I did serve as a public library section director for three years. I've been on various committees and um, <clears throat> served as, you know, officers on other uh, sections and really wanted to get involved with NILA again, um, especially at this time when things are just really happening for us. And I think that, you know, we are resilient and we are bouncing back, but we've always been there. Even though we're technically closed, we are here for everyone. Thank you. All right, thank you all so much for your opening statements. Um, so Nyla is prepared to a question for our candidates. Um, if you have any additional questions during this Q&A period, just put them in the chat, and then we'll open the floor for the member questions right after. All right, so our first question, is what makes you excited to be on the Nyla Council? And we'll start with Stephanie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm confused. Now, I thought the other question was going to be first, but we'll start with that question. <laughs> um, what makes me excited about being on the Nyla Council? I guess I can say um, 
I've always enjoyed participating in NILA, you know, from even from my first conference. My very first conference was, um, I had to present a poster, you know, a poster session, you know, uh, and then I did a, another Pika catch you or whatever they were called like you know as i've gone to nyla conferences progressively um it's been really interesting to see how our uh community has changed i think initially when i was at conference there were very few people of color there were very few people who were um at least visibly lgbtq or i guess uh you know vocal um and on and on and on um there were very few uh prison librarians represented so it's been really nice to watch how um uh, uh participation and representation has changed over the past 10 years so i uh went from kind of feeling like ooh, you know there's nobody here like me and whatever that means, like me, right? Uh, to wow, you know, look at all these people here, and look at look at all that is represented here, you know, um, um, in various shapes and forms, and what libraries mean. Um, and it's been interesting because I know what it means to me, but you know my experience at um, a suburban library versus someone's experience at a prison library versus someone's experience at a rural library or someone's experience up in the boonies. I mean, I never really honestly realized how big New York was <laughs> until we get together at those you know different workshops and we sit in these circles and we talk, and I'm like wait a minute, you know, what she's dealing with is not what I'm dealing with and what he's dealing with is not what we're dealing with. So it's just, it's just fascinating to me. So um, I'm just excited to be a part of that in whatever shape and form I can be and, and how my um, position has changed over the years. And I like to be in it because I know uh, what I think our focus should be. And I know that's another question that's coming later, but um, I just want to be, I want to be at the table, you know, and I think representation matters and um, I have a lot to say. So, <laughs> and I want to help people get, get, you know, what they need. If they need to be heard, I want to be a part of that. That's all I guess I'm trying to say. Thank you. Um, also apologies to start with for this question first, my eye jumped. So now telling about yourself with the second question. Just FYI. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Got ahead of myself. All right, Sarah P, your turn. Um, well, again, piggybacking, um, I love conference time. Um, just interacting with people that I haven't seen for a while. Um, sometimes I, get, I must admit, I get chatting to others and I get listening to their stories and their similar issues, challenges that they're facing. And more often than not, those are the similar things I'm facing. So there's certainly, um, you know, a, a homey feeling knowing that I'm not the only one dealing with a certain issue, that other people are dealing with it too, and learning how they're dealing with it as well. That gives me ideas on how I need to proceed to solve a problem. So, you know, th there's some some comfort in that. Um, the fact that um, we, we call the, the NILA um, headquarters in Gilderland is the clubhouse, <laughs> and I've heard it referenced as that many times. Um, I think that speaks to our organization, the fact that we all seem to know each other or know of each other, and, um, you know, there's that commonality. We're all in the same boat, and we're all rowing together, and, you know, that's a comforting feeling, I think, professionally, um, in, in my opinion. Thank you. All right, Lisa Kay. Um, so I think part of my excitement on being on council and looking at it as a ladder, um, I did start on the Youth Services Board. I'm currently a member at large on LAM, the secretary for the Sustainable um, Action and think, uh, Thinking and Action Roundtable. And that first conference that I went to when I was a full-time librarian with a baby and I brought my mother-in-law. And nobody batted an eye that I, you know, I had to do a poster session for a family place and I'm there with a, you know, a one-year-old. And it's just, there's this level of acceptance. Um, and that makes me excited to see what the next, you know, Nyla's been around for 125 years. And so to have um, the opportunity to help shape that vision and future to ensure it's still here 
uh, for all of us and for all the different needs that we have. Um, I find that pretty exciting. Um, I'm a pretty positive thinker usually, except when it comes to my office, clearly. Um, but <laughs> being able to hear um, and discuss and learn from other library leaders. You know, what Stephanie said, uh, a few years ago, I did a presentation for tween services up at Southern Adirondack Library System, which always, as again, a Long Island girl, I find funny that I leave New York, travel through New Jersey and Pennsylvania to get back up into New York. Um, and one of the things that I was asking people was, you know, tell me about when you were a tween, right? Which is a term we don't use. And I'm thinking of me reading books and doing this and that. And everyone's saying, I woke up at 5 a.m. to help on the farm. I woke up at 5 a.m. to do chores before I went to school. And I, I very quickly realized that, wow, my experience and what I thought I would be talking about is not going to be helpful in any way, shape, or form right now. And I needed to think on my feet. Um, so I think council having so many vast backgrounds, that's what it is. It's thinking on our feet to move forward so that when we see things that are different, um, we embrace them and we acknowledge them and, and kind of envelop them so that we're all moving forward together to become stronger. Thank you. And then Lisa H, your turn. I first became a NILA member in 2006. And in that same year, my director encouraged me to run for a director's position on the PLS board. And I have been involved uh, at that level with NILA ever since, as a secretary in different sections. And uh, I was on the continuing education committee, on the membership committee. Uh, smart secretary, LAMS, representative, you know, I'll, I've been in every section involved somehow, every section I'm a member of. And I think that um, my reason for being excited about this position is to continue working with librarians on all levels, working with all kinds of libraries. Uh, it's a great Thing to go to a conference and meet school librarians and academic librarians and special librarians, find out what they're doing, find out the challenges that they face, and that those challenges aren't very different from the ones we face as public librarians. And I think that um, I have uh, been involved with different groups and lucky to get to know some very, very uh, prestigious, I'm going to call them librarians, Sue Considine, Matt Bollerman, Rebecca Smith Aldrich, all these people have had such a great influence on me and what they do in terms of sustainability, in terms of legislative action, just really wants me to do more for NILA and, and for libraries. And I think that I have been um, lucky to serve on all these different sections. And I see that there are so many people who are working so hard for libraries and, and I wanna work that hard as well. Thank you so much. Um, so our next question is, just tell us a little, about, a little bit about yourself, the library that you work at, anything that you would want voters to know about you. And we will start with Sarah. Of course. <laughs> um, <laughs> so uh, I'm sorry, jumping out of order has sort of thrown me a little bit. So I, if I'm rambling, I apologize. Reel me in, reel me in. <laughs> so um, I work uh, for the Niagara Falls Public Library uh, as the director there. Um, we have two branches. We're the central library for the Nyoga Library System. So there's an added layer of responsibility uh, to try to service the needs of, of um, our 22 members. Um, I, I have to say, I, I just love what I do. And I know to this day, my mother still believes that I sit in my office and read all day. And, you know, I, that's so far from the truth. All of us, we are so busy. Um, mm -hmm you know, trying to write grants and we're trying to offer, uh, you know, really innovative programs and managing our budgets. Um, 
you know, personally, I feel like some days I'm running a small business and that might be a dirty word to say, but I have not one, but four unions uh, in our city. Um, you know, I, we're, we have issues with funding. I, I have construction grants I have to close. Uh, we're short staffed like many other libraries. It's just, it's a constant day. It's always busy. I, I certainly don't have time to kick up my feet and read a John Grisham novel. Um, but within that, that's driven home the fact that I think libraries uh, and librarians need to better market what it is we do to our public. Um, in, for instance, to our, our state assembly people, to our local governments, why should they fund us if they think we just sit around reading all day? Um, you know, it's we need to be good stewards of the money and I uh, that we're given our taxpayer money. I certainly try to be as, be as you know, uh, fiscally responsible as possible. But um, I think that we need to be better advocates for what it is that we do. You know, when we go out asking for money, I think we need to be a better, uh, better educate our government. Uh, reps on what it is we do. And that's something that I do every day in my job. Uh, once a week, I'm in City Hall uh, pressing the flesh and, and waving the flag for our accomplishments for that week. So um, it's a fun job. It's a busy job. I can't imagine doing any other job. Uh, Stephanie, you're next. Jeremy, could you repeat the question? <laughs> <laughs> I know you said tell us about yourself, but could you just say it again? Like, I want to be sure I'm not forgetting something. Yes. Is that um, it? Unfortunately, I can't change the name, so I will always be sure. <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, but the question was, just tell us a little bit about yourself, where you work, your position, anything that you would want voters to know about you. Okay. Um, all right. Well, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm feeling silly. I'm sorry. Um, so. About myself, I'm assistant director and head of youth services at North Castle Public. Um, before that, I was at Katona Village Library. They're both in Westchester County in New York. And as I said before, before that, I was um, a senior librarian at a prison facility, a women's max security facility. Um, and I guess uh, throughout all of that, uh, it's pretty much the same, you know, know your community know your demographic and fill that need um, wherever you happen to be. Um, I think uh, working at uh, a facility um, was one of the, some of the best librarianing I've uh, ever done. Uh, I am grateful and extremely uh, humbled by um, when I was at Katona, I was there for about 10 years and uh, right when I was feeling um, very unappreciated, um, they uh, uh, rallied me for or supported me for the I Love My Librarian Award in 2018. So I was humbled to be one of, um, I think there were about 10 of us that year who won. Um, so that was just mind blowing. And then I left, um, <laughs> um, uh, which kind of led me to uh, understand that uh, it's not about the building, right? It's about the people. It's about us. Um, my mother, when I told her I was going to go back to school to become a librarian, she said to me, Stephanie, why do you want to be one of those women? <laughs> and I was like, what do you mean one of those women? You know, so obviously her experience with libraries and librarians and my experience with libraries and librarians growing up were vastly different. Um, she had a one vision, which was probably a really typical stereotypical vision. And that just was not my experience. Um, throughout my life, they were extremely helpful and supportive to me, whether it was academically, whether it was going and sitting on the floor and looking through albums, checking out uh, you know, the Eagles, Hotel California, or, you know, Desperado, or whatever I was taking home, and then when I was sliding across a book that was inappropriate for my, probably at fifth grade, you know, CB Baby, that world-class uh, novel, I, you know, nobody batted an eye, right, when I checked it out, <laughs> and let me take it home to read. Um, so, yeah, I just want to kind of, um, uh, kind of be a light for that. Um, I do believe that we are never neutral. I don't believe that uh, 
libraries are neutral. Um, I think we have a uh, responsibility uh, in the community to be a platform for those uh, underserved and underheard um, and to uh, um, help uh, uh, shed light on information on, on on shed light on information and, and be really accessible for people um, and to be a safe place for people to come and have the discussions and have the, the meetings that need to be had right now. And, um, and I know I'm gonna get into some other stuff later, but that's about it. Thank you so much. You're uh, welcome. Lisa Kay. Um, what was the question again? No, I'm sure. <laughs> so. Uh, just tell us a little bit about yourself, your position, the library that you work at, and what you want voters to know about you. So I've been at Lindenhurst since November of 2015. Um, and I think what I most would want voters to know about me is um, I'm passionate. Uh, when I do something, it's big, whether it's succeeding or failing. Uh, I fail big, and I think that that's okay. Um, in 2017, we tried to do a bond for the first time in history of this library since it was built, um, and it failed spectacularly. And picking up from that and having to not give up and move forward, um, I think my husband calls it stubbornness, I call it tenacity. Um, <laughs> but it w I was determined to do because I truly do believe, I, I have a horrible poker face. So if I really truly believe in something, I think that sincerity comes out um, and it's so easy to advocate for it, which is why I love being in public libraries and involved in NYLA because everything that I do, everything that I volunteer for within NYLA is because I still feel that passion. Um, it's part of the reason why I still teach because, you know, again, I graduated in library school in 1992 when our technology project was thinking a cassette player to slide. And that was like big tech. Um, so how you have to stay relevant. It's scary, but it's true. That's what it was at Queens College. Um, and so moving forward, you know, you, in order to learn, I need to keep um, re show like be putting myself out there to see what is new, because now I got to stay one step ahead of these students who sometimes know more than I do. So it always is pushing me into a learning um, environment. Uh, getting, you know, Lisa mentioned Matt Ballerman and Rebecca Smith Aldrich, and I'd like to think it wasn't accosting them, but when I saw them speak at NYLA about sustainability, I pretty much went up to them and just explained, like, you need a youth services person involved in this. And they were just like, okay. Um, and I got to learn from two library leaders that were like really at the forefront of all this work with sustainability. Um, and I just, I jumped in full feet. Our library was the first one on Long Island to be completely certified through the NYLA Sustainable Library Certification Program. Um, for the Green Business Partnership, we won an organizational commitment. Um, so I feel like for council too, if I'm elected, I'm all in and that, really is what I want people to know is that I'm not, it's not a check on my resume. I'm, I volunteered for so long. I'm doing this because I want to do it and I want to help keep our association sustainable now in very uncertain times. Thank you. And then Lisa H, your turn. I am the head of circulation and technology at Josephine Louise Public Library in Walden, which basically means I do everything. <laughs> Adult <laughs> programming, collection development, uh, website updates, uh, outreach, outreach, computer literacy, literacy, everything. I'm getting feedback right now. Oh, a little bit. Okay, maybe I um, I have been a librarian since 2004. I've worked in several different capacities as a librarian, adult services librarian, as a head of support services, as a head of adult programming and circulation. So I, I've been around the library. I've seen a lot of things in the library. I've worked with a lot of different people. And I think what, um, remains with me is that whatever we do is greatly appreciated 
and people might not always let us know that, but right now, more than ever, we have proven that we are resilient and that there are many things the library has to offer other than books and DVDs and audiobooks. Whether you're letting people borrow um, cake pans or fishing rods or tools or you're lending out or giving out uh, seeds, plant seeds, vegetable seeds, you are doing what your community wants you to do. And I think that that's something that needs to be addressed um, presently. What does our community want from us? They could see that we can operate virtually. They see that we are still doing whatever we can to bring them programming and online services, uh, you know, eBooks and databases. I have been lucky enough to work with um, my county library association in uh, conducting countywide read programs. We call it the Orange Reads here in Orange County. And we've been very successful in um, presenting several great projects such as Forever by Pete Hamill. And we even got Pete Hamill to come here and speak to us. We last did Unbroken um, by Louis Samperini, and that was a big hit. We got our veteran groups involved. We got our county government involved. And as librarians who know really nothing about running, we planned a, a 5K race. We can't tell you how to prepare for it, but we can give you a book on how to. But I think that that's part of who I am. I enjoy organizing. I enjoy being involved. And I think that's part of why I'm a librarian. I, I enjoy working with people. I like giving people what they want and what they need. And I discovered that as a freshman in college, I was able to find things in reference books that none of my friends could. And they all said, you should be a librarian. And I said, well, okay. And I had worked in the library as a page uh, when I was a teen. Uh, my mother sent all us kids to the library when we were very young. Fortunately, we were within walking distance. I don't know if she wanted us to just get out of the house or if she wanted us to, to read, but it, it was, um, the library for me was an early experience. And I can remember the children's librarians. I can remember the physical layout of the library because it was just a great place to be. And that's what I want the library to be, a great place for everyone. Everyone has access regardless of who you are, what you are. And um, in this time, I feel that's very important. The library needs to be a safe place for people. It needs to be a place for people to come and get information. And it needs to be a place where people can gain knowledge. And I got an email, um, and maybe some of you did. I subscribed to the New York Public Library email list. And um, its president, Anthony Marks, sent out a very nice email this morning. And most importantly, knowledge is power. And I believe that. And we are here to bring that knowledge. Thank you so much, Lisa. Um, just to be cognizant of time, because we are running a little bit late here. Um, not late, but you know, we're, we might. So I want to make sure that we jump into the questions that the voters have submitted. So if you both are okay, if you all are okay with that, does that sound good to you all? Absolutely not. No, I'm kidding. Go ahead. <laughs> There's always one. There's always one. No. That's Stephanie. No, I tripped Stephanie up with the, the question. All right. So we're going to begin the Q&A portion. Um, a few of you all have submitted questions, so we'll start with those. And if anything else comes to mind, just put it in the chat. We'll get to it after. Um, so the first question is, what do you see as Nyla's most important responsibility to New York's public library community? Um, we will start with Lisa Kay. Uh, I think our current main responsibility, because I think that is something that always shifts and changes uh, with the time, um, but our current main 
area of responsibility to voters would really be to help public libraries adapt uh, and respond to disruptions, whether they're anticipated disruptions or unanticipated disruptions, such as COVID-19 for the last two and a half months. Um, because we need to be able to continue to serve all of our different communities, both in the traditional ways that they're looking for, but now also in new hybrid um, virtual ways and reaching out to the community to make sure that they're getting, asking them, what do you need from the library? So the main responsibility for NILA uh, is really, and as a public library council member, would be to ask now the larger structure of public libraries, what do you need? from us, what do you need from Nyla? Beautiful, thank you. Uh, Stephanie, your turn. I guess I'm just gonna piggyback on Lisa. Um, you know, we spent all this time, you know, we're community centers, libraries are the cornerstone of the community, we're the community centers, yada, da, yada, da. And then it's like, oh, nope, you can't <laughs> come in, you know? So um, it's been, it's been, it's been it's been exciting and frustrating and exhausting um, trying to maneuver these past few months. Um, thank goodness for Nyla and thank goodness for the Westchester Library System, I can say. Thank goodness for my colleagues who have started other forums and things on Facebook and Instagram and whatever to uh, get assistance to talk to each other. But really, I think it's it's been difficult for some of us to get out of this mindset. You know, we're, we're just, um, in some ways, we are still so bound to our books. I know we talk about you know, we're more than just books. But I, I've been feeling recently that there are a lot of people who are still clinging to these books. So I'm, I'm, I'm really hoping to um, help uh, us uh, work through this reimagining, you know, and, and how are we going to do this? You know, how are we going to provide uh, the services we need to provide, maybe we need to, to provide some different kind of services, um, and 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 what um, and what, um, as Lisa said perfectly, the hybrid. You know what that's going to be, because that seems to be um, um, uh, what uh, we're all. You know, it is what we're all dealing with in various aspects of our lives, right? It's it's changing. It's the hybrid. So. Uh, it's it's an exciting and uh, kind of uh, slightly scary, but exciting <laughs> time. So yeah, you know that's what we need to do is support to support um, public libraries at this time. Thank you, uh, Lisa H. You're up. I think that um, Nyla has always been a strong advocate for all of us and that will need to continue. I think that uh, we certainly are facing some huge budget cuts because of the pandemic. And I think that um, libraries certainly prove that they can uh, manage without a lot of money, but that money is important, especially when we are bringing in new technology and bringing different parts of the collection to our, our patrons. Yes, we're a community center. People want to convene again. They want to see the circulation clerk. They want to see the person at the reference desk and they want to come to story time. So it will be a big job for Nyla to help us all to reimagine and remake our spaces and, and to continue these services without too many interruptions. And I think that uh, Nyla will need to guide a lot of us through this time. Um, where there is little money and little support from um, other kind of institutions because they're facing the same problems we are. And generally we do get a lot of support from our local businesses, but they're facing bigger problems than we are right now. I think that Nyla has always been um, very good in keeping us aware of what's going on with the legislature what's going on with technology, that certainly needs to continue. And for some people like me, I always feel like I'm a little bit behind the eight ball, but then Nyla comes through with a newsletter and I'm like, aha, 
there we are. I, I can I can figure this out now and I can move ahead. But I, I think that the communication with all of us, especially at this time, is very important. Mm -hmm. And to keep people aware of how they can get out of some of the problems that they're facing is is very important. Thank you. And therapy. I'll just start doing more things now. I don't know. That's okay. Continue. That's okay. <laughs> Um, so I, I will say my week does not start until I receive Nyla's weekly newsletter in my email box. That is like the highlight of my week. And I, I mean, it's, maybe it's a sad existence. I don't know, but I just get really excited about it. Um, and I think it just drives home that Nyla is a professional buttress for us. It's a source of information. Again, you know, we're not in the rowboat by ourselves. There's somebody else rolling along with us. Um, and when I read that newsletter, I think, oh, well, you know, if Nyla had a superpower, it would be information and it would be disseminating that information and communicating it to us. So I, I, I personally appreciate that. Um, I will give you an example. Uh, I was finding myself floundering a couple weeks ago. I'm trying to set up my uh, a Zoom meeting for my library board to meet. And um, I wasn't sure if the governor's um, executive order extended for electronic meetings to the date of my meeting. Um, but there again, by reaching out, uh, I was able to find that information and I was very grateful. So, you know, Nyla has this they got my back, you know, I feel like they, they buttress what I do. And professionally, that is a huge, huge thing for me. Um, I was part of the last um, leadership academy that graduated in 2019. Um, and again, it just felt like they were helping me to be a better uh, librarian, a better community leader. And you know, I, I think Nyla has that responsibility to help buttress us, and they do it very well. Um, yes, I could say we need to advocate together, and yes, funding's an issue, and lobbying for new technology and such, but professionally, they, they have my back. I think that's their being able to communicate and make us better uh, at what we do, yeah. keeping us up to date. That's their superpower. Thank you. So we have 10 minutes left for the panel. So I, you, you all have touched upon your skill sets to the position. Um, so I, the next question I think that we haven't really touched on a little bit would be how do we, how do you see libraries moving forward or staying vital into the next decade and beyond? And we will start with Stephanie this time. <laughs> Okay, I know we've got 10 minutes. Um, I know, it's a loaded question. Uh, yeah, <laughs> and, 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 and sad to say, I you know, um, I think with uh, what we've all been dealing with, with uh, uh, COVID, um, it has highlighted what we still need to focus on, to me, which is um, diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, it seems it seems like I don't know, you know, I know what I said in the beginning and I know how uh, in the beginning of the panel and I know what I see, but it's amazing to me that it's still it's still an issue. Uh, we all know what's happening in the country right now. We all know um, uh, how different communities are feeling um, and, and I don't want to hog up all the time, but I just think it's still relevant. Whatever, however you want to say the word, uh, look at the word diversity, equal access as far as equity and inclusion. You know, we need everybody at the table uh, for these uh, discussions and representation matters. Representation matters in NYLA, it matters uh, in staffing, it matters in the materials we're circulating, and we need everybody to have access to those materials and all of that and to be welcome at the table not just tolerated at the table welcome at the table um and that's all i'm going to say on that well, I mean, it's so hard to remain neutral as jeremy um, i'm not neutral <laughs> i know the moderator like whatever anyway I know. 
Lisa H, it's your turn. Me, Lisa H, I'm sorry to hear. Lisa H. Um, I couldn't agree more with Stephanie. I think that you know, we, merely tolerating diversity is is not acceptable. We we have to be more welcoming. We have to uh, make our collections more diverse, our programming more diverse, and find ways to bring in people who are not being served or underserved, uh, you know, technology-wise in, in many ways. And I think that what we do is, you know, bring people in for a variety of reasons. And for whatever reason you come into the library, that's your business. But when you are there, we want you to feel like you are our family. You are home with us. And, you know, my library, my job is my second home. And, and I want people to feel welcome there. I want them to feel like they can ask me anything, that they can uh, not be afraid to come into the library because someone else there seems weird or, you know, whatever the situation is that, you know, we're there to keep them safe. And certainly right now, um, tolerance is very important. And I think that in the community where I am, I'm in a very poor community. We have a lot of homeless people. I'm sure you all are dealing with homeless people. people. But, but you know, we, we, we want those people to feel welcome. We want them to say, we want to say, yes, come in and use our computers. Yes, you know, come in and join our programs. Yes, you belong here. And that that access for everyone is very important. And I think that I've been able to see that in the community where I am now, because it is a poor community. It is an undereducated community. And, um, you know, we say this right now, especially people are all the same. We all believe the same color. We all have the same needs. We all want the same things from life. And I think that the library is a place for everyone to come and feel that they can get what they need. Thank you. Sarah P. Um, so I, I'm a Canuck. I, I did not grow up in this country. Um, I, I have difficulty understanding what's going on. Um, I, I come from a, a place where cultures, uh, different cultures are celebrated. People are lifted up. People are part of a, a larger tapestry that we all participate in. Everyone has an equal voice. Um, maybe that's not true and I'm ignorant, I don't know, but for the, the, you know, the first 25 years of my life, that's what we knew. We, we would celebrate uh, differences in culture. Um, I, my high school, I'll give you a good example, was French, English, and Mohawk. We, we serviced people from a nearby uh, Aklasasne tribe. Um, so it's, I, I am having trouble wrapping my brain around why that doesn't happen here, but I'm learning and I'm watching what's going on. I want people to come into the Niagara Falls Public Library and feel like they have a place there, that they can feel safe and they can participate. Um, I, you know, we, we service a community of people. We don't just service one person. So it's important to be in touch with the makeup of our community, who lives there, what their wants and desires are. Again, um, I'm a steward of their tax paying funds and I wanna make sure that I'm servicing them with those funds uh, in the way that they want. So um, um, it's a challenge, it's, it's always a challenge. It's always a challenge. Thank you. And Lisa, can your turn? So I think the last think two and a half months, months, two and a half months have shown most of us shown most of um, um, why, why, we, where we're going. Where we're going. Okay, I'm hearing feedback again. again. Um, libraries have to remain vital and necessary to our communities. Um, and in order to do that, what this, what the last two and a half months have shown me, and it's not just COVID, it's everything that's going on in this country, um, is that truly listening to what people need for us to remain vital is not what we have been maybe giving to them in our communities. Uh, and, we, and we need to make those changes. 
um, so things like voter registration days, the census information, uh, realizing that the vast majority of people who walk into the doors of my community look like me, but that there are also a lot of people in the community who don't look like me, and why aren't they coming in? Um, and going out, going out, figuring that out. Figuring that out. So for us to move forward. I think Lisa I think said she would bet she would uh, your library your doing a 5k. And I look at the last two and a half months is that we all started thinking we were in a 5k. So we were running fast. And then that 5k turned into a 10k. It turned into a marathon. And now I think we're all realizing we're all it's an ultra. It's an ultra marathon. marathon. And so, and we so need to, need in order to stay vital, to keep need ourselves and listen to the community to get the services that they need out there, which means we need to keep learning. Thank you. Well, that is the end of our Q&A period. Um, with one Perfect minute. timing, wow. <laughs> Thank you all so much for the camera for attending this and giving all your insights. I was in Thank you. Um, just so everyone knows, voting opens June 15th, closes July 15th, and this forum video will be shared on the Nala 10 page. All right. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Vote, everybody. Vote, everybody. Vote, everybody. Vote, everybody. Vote, everybody. Vote in November, too. <laughs>